UNC5537, Mandiant today published an investigation on what exactly this was, and it pretty much confirms what I speculated, which was that it's information stealer malware uh, going after both Snowflake employees and also customers' environments. Honestly, this is a pretty easily detectable thing. Not a lot of things touch all of these sensitive file locations inside your browser. So usually you can build some type of detection based on what's querying all these files. Microsoft has decided that it's going to make a PC. They're adding in this feature called recall that is going to record everything that you do. So it screenshots every five seconds. They backpedaled saying, We're, we'll make it opt in. It's like, really? You didn't think that that would be a good thing to begin with? I'm curious how many people would actually care. Let me call my dad real quick. Let's see what he says. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's not too far fetched to imagine like the headline of like somebody gets killed because they were trying to get out of a domestic abuse relationship. Their spouse searched through recall, saw what they were looking at, oh and my God. Then it escalates from there. That's terrifying. Remember, if the people you are communicating with are running a PC with this crap on it, it's taking screenshots of like your chats with that person and your emails to that person. I want to give credit to the people that figured out how to extract the data from it, because that's really the last step that puts the nail in the coffin for most organizations, either enabling this or even considering purchasing these computers. This is a zero day vulnerability being transmitted through TikTok DMs. Doesn't require download, click, anything. They just have to open the message. It has been patched by TikTok already. This isn't the first vulnerability that's impacted TikTok users in the recent years. Yeah, this is kind of crazy for me to think about, like an in-app exploit that uses the app to actually exploit the vulnerability. It's like, it's not really an Android exploit, right? It's actually specifically for TikTok's app. It's probably a web app thing behind the, behind the scenes, right? A local police department that lives to ride on the border, Chula Vista, they're in San Diego, has what's called a drone first responder program. They're trying to get so the police just have eyes on the situation before they get there. There's already reports that drones have seen people in, in uh, intimate acts <laughs> as they're flying through space. So <laughs> they're selling it as a first response so that when they actually have humans respond, they're going to be better able to identify, oh, this is a person who is in crisis. Because yeah, it totally right. wouldn't freak out somebody having a mental health crisis for a drone to pop up and start talking <laughs> to them. Synovus basically handles all the testing and pathology. You got hit with ransomware. They're completely locked out of their systems. Like nothing is working. Major hospitals in the National Health Service have had to postpone even non-elective surgery. There's allegations that it's this Russian uh, ransomware gang. Quillen. I thought ransomware threat actors were noble and didn't go after healthcare organizations. Oh yeah, no, there's a special place in hell reserved for whoever whoever did this one because like people are actually going to die on this one because they they can't get life-saving surgery a jury has found a former senior executive and former sales manager of a company called epsilon data management guilty of federal criminal charges related to targeting millions of consumers for mass mailing fraud basically they were in a scheme they sold targeted lists of consumers data and they also participated in the fraud. I guess selling their data is probably fine. <laughs> but, but, but once you participate in it, you take that one extra step. Yes. The FBI has given away 7,000 ransomware keys. So if you've just been waiting to decrypt your computer for some reason, uh, then here you go. Here's That's awesome. awesome. 7,000 nice. uh, keys. Maybe yours is in there. Let's hope that Synovus's keys are in there. <laughs> The FCC okaying the program to bolster school and library cybersecurity. They don't have the funds uh, to properly defend themselves, so they rely upon volunteers. So two hundred million the schools and libraries. They'll be able yeah. to afford one Splunk license. Oh! <laughs> it's not that they're just like doling out two hundred million dollars to do like point solutions for different schools and libraries. They're encouraging people to come up with solutions that can then be rolled out. Um, across the larger community. These are organizations that are critically underfunded, but also critical to society. So um, be good if we can get them some help. 
Join us for live InfoSec news every Monday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time on the Black Hills InfoSec YouTube channel.